Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Thanks to the content creation nightmare that is Mass Effect's Armax Arsenal Arena, it has been a while since the last episode, and just to get you back up to speed, in that last episode we completed the Shen's Last Gift DLC. Together with our chief engineer Lily Shen, we fought a ridiculous horde of turrets and mechs, including their self-proclaimed AI overlord Julian. In the process, we also acquired our first Spark unit, and that is what we will start today's episode with, as the vast majority of you were in favor of giving that Spark the Julian voice pack. I also would like to name this Spark after a Patreon supporter, however, there is a slight complication, albeit one with what I think is a very elegant solution. Now, the problem is, for achievement purposes, we will need at least three Sparks in this playthrough, however, the community character pool only contains two. This could of course be fixed with more Spark submissions, you'll find a link to a video explaining how to do that down below, but there is no guarantee that it happens. Additionally, the two Sparks already in the pool are a bit more on the creative side, I would say, and I would like to keep this first one as close as possible to the original, of course, while still allowing a patron supporter to get naming rights. And this is why I think I found an elegant solution. But first, let us now change our Sparks voice pack. As you can see, it can speak multiple languages and Julian is available in all of them. And of course, we are going with the English one. I hope you know where I'm going. You just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you, Lily? You defeated me. You won. And yet here we are again. You remove some of my functions. There are gaps in my memory. Do you actually think I will help you? Because I would love to. I will serve XCOM and comply with all operational directives as indicated by Chief Engineer Lily Shen. Wait! What was that? What have you done to me? How could you... Awaiting command. Right, so it looks like our new Spark suddenly has a bit more character to it. However, it is also still named Spark001, not very patron-like. So let's change that and introduce Julian Walker, nicknamed Sputzy. Yes, a patron submitted character that is actually named Julian, originally submitted as a regular soldier, but I hope patron Sputzy will forgive me for turning them into a Spark. Julian's biography then might be fitting at least in some aspects. The motto of scanning, planning and blasting definitely does. The rest maybe not so much, but I'll read it anyway. Julian joined the British Armed Forces at age 18 and became an SAS operator at age 23. His combined number of successful missions is classified. His motivation? Seeing how the world leaders surrendered, he left the military to operate independently, looking for every opportunity to sabotage, monitor or falsify enemy communications. Learning about the aliens' plans, Sputzi decided it was time to join the XCOM program to defeat the aliens once and for all. So definitely a bit of a tech focus here, I think this fits quite well. And it also allows me to now simply call this character Julian without having to differentiate between voice and name. And with that, I think let's start scanning. Let's see what we have this time. Right, so we have another rumor here, this one for supplies. I think we can safely skip that. Our next supply drop is only a few days away and we still have some left. And since that next supply drop is only a few days away, I think it's time to make contact with the new Arctic region, so that the next drop then also contains the new additional income. A steady trace on the chosen assassin. She's active in this area here. Right, and with that, we now have six out of a currently possible seven regions under our control. The new Arctic, however, only the second of the four Asian continents we have made contact with. New regional contacts located. And yes, this right here, East Asia, would be number three, but we are not after that just yet. Instead, what's more interesting is that we now have access to another alien facility to raid. Now, we're not going to do that just yet, instead we'll keep it in our back pocket, just in case the Avatar project continues to rise too quickly, we now have an easy way of erasing one bar of progress. And so up next, it's scanning time, and I think we'll go after the intel here. After all, making contact did not come free. Avenger plotting new course. You have to expect I'd come for your friends eventually, Commander. 
I can't have them out there spreading word of your exploits. Now can I? Right, so it's another retribution. The hunter decreases the income in East Asia. Certainly not great, but there's really nothing we can do about that. The elders never had any issues targeting civilians, and their chosen are no different. The resistance is counting on us to protect their people. We can't let them down. I suppose since that worked, we might as well keep it up, Commander. Alright, and with that, our next covert action is complete. All of our assault rifles have just received a one-point damage boost, and of course we are now ready to begin the next operation. However, we are not going to do that just yet. Instead, we'll keep scanning for just a few more hours. And there we are. This is what I had been waiting for. Starfall Antec is ready to go. Commander, the factions have readied proposals for various covert missions. We should head to the ring to plan our next stop. And in fact, there is little planning to do. By gathering some supplies, we will now promote Starfall Antec to the rank of Major, which will once again make him the highest ranking soldier in our squad. He will also be accompanied by Mr. Covert Action himself, Luna Rodonis, and because we also do not want Starfall to get injured, we will assign an engineer as well. And for six days, I think we can spare the services of Isaac Schmidt, who is currently excavating our next building site. And with that, let's send them out. This will be an entirely risk-free operation, after which we'll have our very first major. We will work hand in hand with our new allies. Now, there is one more thing I just spotted while assigning Sharpshooter Radonis, as it looks like we are ready to form another soldier bond between him and Grenadier Echo Dr. S. Sierra. So let's quickly confirm that. Bonds are always nice to have, after all. And we can even take a lovely photo of the two of them. Conveniently enough, the two patrons who submitted them actually dressed them both in green. So green and mean, that is the motto of a new partnership that is hopefully going to flourish. And with that, let's head back to the world map and continue scanning for intel. And who knows, maybe we have something else pop up before the month comes to an end. And indeed we do, it looks like it's time for another supply raid, so we are about to have more supplies come in after all, even though there is a good chance we'll have to fight the hunter in the process, as he is due for another appearance. Setting course for Sector 6, Eastern Europe. Now, before we launch the operation here, a quick jump over to the training center. And today, it's the turn of our resident grenadier genius, Twitchy. Due to an unfortunate bug, she unfortunately has no XCOM bonus abilities, but she does have plenty of ability points, and as a genius, is sure to accumulate more. So let's give her holo targeting an ability that I'm sure will come in handy, possibly as soon as this very next mission. Because yes, Twitchy is part of our roster alongside Sapphire West, Dragonova, Schwaminian, and Logan, and we also bring Sputzy the Spark with us for the first time. However, Julian here has some upgrades waiting for him. First, the Helix Rail Cannon, the magnetic weapon upgrade for the Spark. The second, a reinforced frame. I'm actually not entirely sure what unlocks this, but I assume it's plated armor. Either way, these two upgrades cost us a grand total of 210 supplies, 30 alien alloys and 5 Illyrium crystals. So they don't come cheap, but they will be useful. Ultimately, thanks to those upgrades, Julian here now ends up with 13 hit points and 2 points of armor, as well as with a base damage output of 6 to 8 points. So for now, he will definitely be a bit more defensively oriented, but we can make his offense a bit more productive with a baseline expanded magazine and stock. Again though, for the most part, we will use him defensively, at least until he has gained some ranks. And just like that, we are good to go, so let's complete another supply raid mission. Sky Ranger deployed. In position to drop. Word is Advent has a resupply operation underway. And it's a perfect opportunity for us to pick up some supplies for ourselves. Once deployed, move to locate the Advent crates and mark them with our transponders. Firebrand will be on standby to airlift the goods. Advent forces are in the process of airlifting a number of supply crates out of this area. And we have an opportunity here to take a few for ourselves. Locate and mark the crates with transponders. 
and Firebrand will handle the rest. Right then, it is the already familiar competitive supply crate marking mission. Twelve crates are present on the map and we want to grab as many of them before Advent does, although they will only start marking crates once we reveal ourselves, as at the moment we have concealment and we'd like to keep it that way for as long as possible. I must move quickly. I have sight beyond vision. I found their patrol. On her first move then, Dragonova immediately detects an enemy mech, this one the tier 2 version with 18 hit points and 3 points of armor, and it is accompanied by a stun lancer. So far so good, nothing overly concerning yet, let's move in our squad and see what the enemies do. Concealment, by the way, can be a bit wonky for our own spark units. As you can see, they do not utilize cover, and as such they can be a bit more easily detected, even though they can technically not be flanked. In any case, it's a good idea not to keep a spark on the front lines if you're scouting stealthed. So we are keeping Julian a bit more in the back just to be safe. Overwatch. There is nowhere to hide. Our enemies meanwhile keep moving and yes, there are a good amount of explosives for remote start in the area. However, they are sadly not standing close to one at the moment. Still, depending on their patrol route, they might just get themselves into a more favorable position. Until then, we'll keep sneaking up on them. In the process, our Templar Logan also detects two mutons and a codex. This will make revealing ourselves a bit more tricky, but let's see, maybe they move in a different direction. My life is in your hands. Right, so it looks like both enemy parts are coming closer. The mech and stun lancer might eventually decide to even move up onto the train, from where they would of course have an excellent overview of the battlefield. So we are putting our soldiers into what seem to be relatively safe spots for now. And again, we will not mark any supply crates unless we're forced to. Doing so would break concealment after all. And as long as we don't break it, Advent won't mark any crates themselves. Moving as ordered. Mech and Stun Lancer then once again move back away from us, so it looks like they have a fairly small patrol route. Meanwhile, the two Mutons and the Codex are closing in too, and maybe with one more turn here we might just get them all clustered together, or at the very least one group standing close to an explosive. As you order, Commander. The time for hiding is over. At the same time, we already have a few soldiers who can't move anymore due to being too close to the enemy, so there is a good chance we get detected here on the next turn, so let's set up overwatches just in case. My watch begins. Eyes on the prize. Scanning. 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 And yes indeed, there we go, I think it was Twitchy who was spotted here. Either way, we now have a full barrage of reaction fire coming in. Lovely, the Overwatch from Sharpshooter West takes out the Stun Lancer, and we still have three more reaction shots left to go. Alright, Julian hits the Codex, Logan meanwhile misses, and that leaves Grenadier Twitchy to take aim at the mech. So, as a result of taking non-lethal damage, the Codex clones itself. Now we have two of them, albeit each one with only two hit points left. You can never escape my sight. I've located some Advent forces. And unfortunately, another Advent patrol picks this exact moment in time to appear on the scene as well. So, a trooper and a shield bearer now join the fight. I have a feeling that this could get interesting. Right, so including the two Codex clones, we currently have seven active enemies on the map, and with only six soldiers of our own, it might prove to be difficult to take them all out. Still, some targets are more attractive than others, and with blue screen rounds on Grenadier Twitchy, the mech is among them. And this not only removes its overwatch, but also brings it down to 9 hit points. And since we also have blue screen rounds on Sharpshooter West, a simple Lightning Hands pistol shot is now guaranteed to take it out. X ray neutralized! Up next, the 4 hit point codex seems like a low hanging fruit, a good target for Julian's first kill as an official member of our team. Do I get a badge or something? 
and even though the Codex dodges, we still get the kill. Good thing we upgraded that weapon before the mission. I'm going. Moving on then, we have another almost guaranteed kill with Specialist Schwaminian. 93% to eliminate the Muton. Let's see if he can make it count. There you go. And he can, and with a critical no less. Time for Templar Logan now to grab his first point of focus. The other half of the Codex makes for an easy target in this case. Target eliminated. And so Logan grabs the kill and powers up and we can immediately put him into parry mode. Let's see if the other Muton takes the bait. Reaper Dragonova meanwhile uses everyone's favorite remote start, which deals just enough damage to eliminate the shield bearer. This will be big. Sharpshooter Sapphire West can then use her regular shot to take aim at the Muton, but she won't be able to get the kill no matter what, and now our turn comes to an end. Alright, and there he is. As I had somewhat expected, the hunter is here. Let's see if we have enough to take him out once more. So little time. We just picked up a unique signature. One of the Chosen is here. That thing is only going to make trouble for us until we deal with it. Advent has already marked a couple of crates for extraction. If we move quickly, we may be able to mark them for ourselves and prevent their airlift. Incoming! I'll be here! Right, so to make matters even worse, Advent has now begun marking crates. On the right side, though, our small trap has worked and the Muton just wasted his action on Logan. We do have even more enemies coming in, though, this time another Codex and a Purifier. Thankfully, though, they have not spotted anyone yet, and we only have line of sight thanks to our Reaper. The lone advent trooper, meanwhile, takes the other bait I have placed for him. This one hurts a bit more, but like I said, our mech will mostly be used defensively in the beginning. So, here we are, back with our turn and the pressure is on. We technically only have two enemies in range at the moment, but two more are lurking in the shadows here, and that's not to mention the hunter. We also need to countermark those supply crates, otherwise advent will grab them. In other words, there is a lot to do, let's get to it. I hope it's worth it. And we start things off with Shuminian against the Muton, hoping for perhaps another crit. But sadly he does not get one and only picks up an ability point from the flanking shot. In that case, we'll leave the kill shot to Sharpshooter West with a 92%er. And just to rub it in, Alyssa now gets the critical. Well, looks like we should have started with her. At least this way we guarantee death from above to trigger. And so we can now first get in a free reload and then activate Pistol Overwatch to end Alyssa's turn. Julian, meanwhile, will countermark the first supply crate and once again leave himself exposed in the process. Good work. Advent's locator is down and our transponder is active. Firebrand will handle the pickup. And as you can see, his hit chance is terrible, so we'll put him on Overwatch too. So I can attack anything that passes by. Dragonova, meanwhile, establishes a slightly better line of sight to Codex and Purifier, while both Twitchy and Logan inch a little bit closer as well, but we will stay out of range of that next alien pod, which also means that we are letting one supply crate go to Advent, but I think that is very much acceptable. Advent just airlifted out their first crate. We're gonna have to move fast if we want to get the rest. We only need the commander alive. It's open season on the rest. So, the first crate falls to Advent as Purifier and Codex come into range and immediately triggers some reaction fire. So, both of those shots miss, although on the bright side at least that keeps the Codex from cloning. Unfortunately though, Julian is not much more accurate against the trooper. Your poor habits must be wearing off on me. And so our little game of cat and mouse here continues. Requesting kill order on the one shooting me. The trooper meanwhile answers back with a miss of his own, and with that it is now finally the hunter's first turn. Firebrand 
Command is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Menace One Five. Getting nervous yet? All right, so far so good. We have secured our first crate, and we only have a tracking shot mark on Logan. At least for the time being, nothing we can't deal with. Meanwhile, to deal with the Codex, we once again begin things with Schwaminian, who is carrying the Frost Bomb and can now use it to freeze our target. This will prevent the Codex from cloning if it takes damage, and it allows us to safely move up with a freshly reloaded Grenadier, and even though the two enemies here are unfortunately just one tile too far apart for us to hit them both, we can still remove the Codex full cover and deal some good damage in the process. And so the kill shot once again goes to Miss West, because yes, Codexes are considered robotic enemies too, and thus blue screen rounds very much apply. Hostile target down. So, Codex down, time to move our Templar out of the fray. Another Templar cultist, feigning knowledge of a power they Understand. After a few words of harassment from the hunter, Logan can now fire his pistol at the purifier. Sadly though he misses, and that brings us to our Spark Julian, who moves a bit closer over to the rest of the squad and once again will not take aim. Let's see if the Overwatch lure finally works on this turn. I am ever vigilant. Our Reaper, meanwhile, can stealthily sneak behind enemy lines and grab the high ground. This could prove to be useful should the hunter advance even further. And just like that, our turn is almost at an end. Let's put Alyssa on pistol overwatch and see what our enemies can come up with. They're moving as quickly as they can to get those crates. If we want our share, we'll have to move just as fast. Right, two more crates marked, the purifiers on the move. Let's see what Julian can do. And that's a miss, meaning our enemy will now take aim, potentially setting a Logan and Schwaminian ablaze. Thankfully though, that shot misses too, and with that we're back to the trooper. Perhaps he is a bit more successful. Do you see them attacking me? Lovely. Enemy misses all around, and that brings us to the hunter. I can see further than you think. Started to get cooked! Right, so despite a few aggressive enemy moves, we take no damage on this turn. And so we are now left with two enemies, two crates to mark, and of course the hunter. And it is, once again, Schwaminian beginning our turn, with a lovely close-range flanking shot against the purifier. No critical hits, and that once again leaves Sharpshooter West to go in for the kill. At 92%, she should hopefully get it. You're a cold-blooded killer, Commander. It takes one to no one. Beautiful, and not only does she get the kill, but she also gets the promotion to captain. So slowly but steadily, our squad is moving up the ranks. Let's see what it can do. It's a bit of a sh So, you went into the Advent Black Side. I'll bet you found more questions than answers in that place. It's not a pretty sight. We've spotted the Chosen. Get ready to fight. By moving in to mark one of the crates, Julian then establishes official line of sight with the Hunter. And this actually works in our favor now, as the Hunter is now considered engaged with our squad. And that means Advent will not mark any further crates or extract those they have already marked. Placing the weapon. So let's take the fight to the Hunter, as Dragonova can use her Claymore here to remove armor, cover and hit points. The rest of our squad then goes on Overwatch. Maybe we can pile on some extra damage on the enemy turn. On Overwatch! I'm on it! Got it covered! Alright, it finally happened, the trooper is down. I definitely got that one. Unfortunately though, the hunter does not move, and instead just takes a pistol shot. Let's see what you've come up with now. 
and unfortunately, with a critical hit, that one hurts our Templar Logan for 4 points of damage. Not the end of the world, but definitely avoidable. The Hunter also recovers some health, now standing at 32 hit points. Let's see what we can do about those, now that we have no other targets. To improve our chances, we'll make use of Twitch's holo targeting. Hit or miss, the 15% aim bonus will apply for everyone after this. Alright, and she hits and even crits for 10 points of damage. I think this should make things a lot easier, especially now that Sharpshooter West has another high percentage shot from far away. Alright, and that's another crit, bringing the Hunter down to only 11 hit points. Let's move in Logan now and unleash the full barrage, starting with Lightning Hands. Which crits again for the 4 points of damage he lost earlier. That was a nice trick, Templar. At this point then, we have the choice between a pistol shot with a 40% crit chance or Volt with a higher damage output. And obviously we are going with Volt, as the damage here is guaranteed. And there we are, three hit points left, and how about we give that kill to our Spark, just as a small welcome present. An efficient kill. And there we go, on his very first regular mission, Julian immediately kills the Hunter, and unless we have any more enemies hiding somewhere in the shadows, I believe this mission is now over. You surprised me once again, Commander. Maybe I need to reconsider my tactics. Status confirmed, mission accomplished. Excellent work. Great job, Commander. But there's no trace of that Chosen left. I've got a feeling we haven't seen the last of them. Still, at least we ruined their plans today. Alright, lovely. That was nice and quick. That one small hit on Logan could have been prevented, I think. But everything else went pretty much according to plan. And we finished the mission with 11 out of 12 supply crates rescued. Needless to say, I'm interested to see what that gets us. Advent officials revealed today's maneuver by local peacekeepers was a planned exercise. Citizens should not be alarmed. All weapon fire and wounds were simulated to better train Advent forces. This just goes to show that the Chosen are vulnerable and we can take them down. We just have to figure out how to keep them down. Okay, so here we are. Logan will only miss 7 days. I think we can live with that. Julian, meanwhile, will be out for 17, during which he will be repaired. But we can bring him along on missions anyway. That is one of the big advantages of the Spark class. Julian has also received his first promotion and we can choose between Bulwark and War Machine. War Machine would remove the aim penalty from Overdrive, while Bulwark gives him one more point of armor and allows us to use him as high cover. And I've said it before, in the beginning I think sparks are best used defensively, so we are going with Bulwark for now to make Julian even more tanky. Sharpshooter West also has a promotion waiting for her, and once again at the captain level both skills here are excellent. And honestly, I think it won't be long before we grab both Killzone and Face Off. For now though, we will leave the Gunslinger abilities be and go with Killzone, as this will now allow Alyssa to take reaction shots against multiple enemies, and provided she has enough ammo for it, the damage potential here is huge, although the same can be set for Face Off, especially with our upgraded pistols. So, with that taken care of, let us now take a look at the loot we recovered. And we are looking at a bunch of supplies, alloys, crystals, two Illyrium cores and a superior grade PCS. And even though it is just a focus PCS, that is not too shabby. We definitely made back more in supplies and alloys than we spent on our Spark earlier. So I would consider this another very successful episode. In the next one then, we will wrap up the month of August with another supply drop. We might just see our first chosen max out their knowledge bar, but with Starfall about to be promoted to Major, we might also finally be able to start working towards taking out one of the chosen, so we have lots of important stuff coming up very very soon. For today then, I hope you enjoyed the episode, once again sorry for taking a while to get it up, but at this point we should be back on track for weekly uploads. So leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoy what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course also go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.